The actual construction on this palace began in 1716. It was a gift from Queen Anne and confirmed by an act of Parliament and a grateful nation for the first Marlborough's victory at the Battle if of Blenheim. If the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. John Van Brugge was the architect of Blenheim Palace. His intentions for Blenheim was to house a national hero and to celebrate England's newly won supremacy over the French in a blaze of architectural glory to rival Versailles. Its function was intended to be a monument, castle, citadel, and a private house in that order. And in that reasoning, he utilized all the mass ornamentation, symbolism, and drama of the Baroque, following also contemporary conventions of symmetry and formality, for example, the typical arrangement of staterooms, anterooms, drawing room, bedrooms, equal on either side of the central salon. Various nations of the world are represented in these paintings on the walls. Over the door is the first duke's armorial bearing, the black double-headed eagle. As our tour guide explained, tapestries were the most reliable source of history available. Portraits, on the other hand, were a different story. When this portrait was commissioned of Consuelo Vanderbilt and her husband, the seventh Duke of Marlborough, nine months later they separated and were divorced. She went on to marry a Frenchman. She's a step above him, even though she's a tall figure. To prove, he needed her money to keep the palace running and her family wanted royalty in their bloodline. Her mother had a golden cradle made so she could rock her two sons in it. Consuelo definitely made her mark in this palace. Not one luxurious detail was left out of this palace. The tapestries, the gilded ceilings, the Chippendale furniture, the original oil paintings. It probably rivals Versailles and maybe even Buckingham Palace. Okay, Al caught my smirk that we were going through yet another stateroom full of more tapestries and priceless art.
As we enter the chapel from this upper entrance, it was originally the family's pew. The chapel is dominated by the dramatic monument to the first duke, dressed as a Roman general, and the duchess and their two sons, both of whom died young. The four daughters are not included in this family group. After a lovely day, we're returning to our temporary home, Ellenborough Manor. This is an aerial view. We will be leaving this beautiful sanctuary tomorrow for London, full of memories and a whole lot of history we've learned. <music>